Hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thank you very much for joining us for our March Climate Watch update brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz and also IBM. As we take a look at the next few weeks ahead, we are seeing La Nina slowly fade away. But at the same time, the sea surface temperatures just north of New Zealand, they are at their peak. So that sort of means it's one step forwards, one step backwards as far as lows are concerned trying to form up in this tropical area north of New Zealand. So we're not yet finished with rainmakers forming north of New Zealand. We'll still be seeing those for the next couple more months. Whether or not one reaches New Zealand though, that's a whole different story. So we're going to cover that. Also the cyclone risks for the Southwest Pacific and Australian areas. We're not yet done with the cyclone season. That is peaking right now. So let's take a look and see what's happening at the moment on the temperature map showing the whole Pacific Ocean. Um, not too stormy at the moment. We do have a couple of lows in the New Zealand Australia area. This one here just off from um, Queensland is likely to form into a tropical cyclone. We'll have more details about that in this update. But let's kick off first of all with the week by week step that we do here showing you where the highs and lows are going to be as we go into this month. And what you're noticing probably straight away is the uptick in low pressure. So on this map, areas with low pressure in the blue boxes, areas with high pressure in the red boxes. There's a lot of low pressure on this map at the moment, mostly up here in the tropics. There's a cyclone departing the Australian area, a new cyclone forming in the Coral Sea, more lows forming up here in the islands north of New Zealand, and an ex-tropical low just off the eastern side of New Zealand right now. We've also got, for the first week of March, a fair bit of low pressure forming in the Tasman Sea area, but also down here in the Southern Ocean. In fact, for those who were really following the weather back in January, you may remember we were getting lots of big storms in the Southern Ocean. The low pressure um, was, well, the air pressure was very low down there, much lower than normal. We're seeing that again this month. We're seeing a few storms developing down here in the Southern Ocean, which are going to affect our weather in New Zealand and also places like Tasmania over the next couple of weeks. Not so much in the first week, I guess, because we've got those northerlies, but later in the week, by the time we get to the end of this week, the southerly change coming through here that you see on the map will be reaching New Zealand, which means when we kick off week two, there is that southerly change. Here is one of those lows, there's another one, 966 hectopascals, 970. So those are quite low and stormy, enough to dredge up a fair bit of energy. So in the New Zealand area next week, southwest winds will be slowly starting to ease with that high, which is a very weak high, rolling on in. Now that weak high is going to play a key role though in New Zealand's weather and also some parts of Australia because that cyclone that's likely to form in the Coral Sea later this week, well by next week that, that's where it is. It's pulling in towards New Caledonia. So that system there could be stopped reaching New Zealand by that block of high pressure. In fact, that's quite likely to happen. Uh, the low will be guided around the outer edges. And by the way, there's another couple of lows in there as well. They may all sort of take the energy off each other. So whether or not we get one cyclone or a couple, that depends on just how close those areas of low pressure form. But even if they do form into two different cyclones, neither of those systems look likely to hit New Zealand because we've got this big southwest flow caused by that storm in the Southern Ocean and that high out there over Sydney. Into the third week of the month, now we do get a little bit more high pressure coming back in again. So while we are, yes, seeing some signs of autumn, there are also some signs that we're not yet finished with summer. And a, and a map like that one here in the third week of the month, indicating that as we get to the halfway mark of March and start to get into that um, towards the, the end part of it, we may well be seeing more high pressure coming through northern New Zealand. But if you, if you drill down to that map, you can still see plenty of showers in there. So it's still going to be showery, but that's not enough to fix the dry pattern we've had for the last couple of years in northern and eastern areas. By the way, look at this big area of low pressure. This is what we're saying. The Southern Ocean looks quite stormy as we go through this month, and the highs in the New Zealand area, not overly powerful, but perhaps just powerful enough to be north of us and blocking those tropical lows. Okay, let's talk about the tropics for a moment, and La Nina, well that's in force at the moment. This is the map from the Bureau of Meteorology out of Australia, and speaking of the Bureau of Meteorology, here is their outlook. Um, the average of international model outlooks, so that's basically taking all the computer models they trust and finding what's the most average likely outcome. So with La Nina, what they're saying is, as we go into March, 
very borderline, starting to fade back to neutral. And by the time we're in May, we're basically back to neutral again. And as you see, as we go on towards winter, July, we're in neutral. So La Nina was never going to be this big, uh, that big this year for us in New Zealand and Australia and the South Pacific. It was peaking back in December. That's when we saw Cyclone Yasa, when that cyclone slammed Fiji. But it's been a lot quieter since. And I think now we're going to see it getting a little bit quieter still. Sea surface temperatures at the moment, just to give you an understanding where that cyclone's forming up here, the sea surface temperatures, they're about 30 degrees Celsius. This, they actually go off the key. So in the New Zealand area, for northern places, you're in the 20 degree mark, you get down to Wellington, you're in the late teens, and you get further down the uh, towards Dunedin, and you're getting sort of more toward, towards the lower teens as far as sea surface temperatures are concerned. The warmer the sea, the more likely you are to get lows forming. So that's why this area to the north is still a very interesting area to watch. And that's where we are likely to see that cyclone forming. So the highest risk for a cyclone that we can see in the New Zealand and Australia region over the next two weeks is this one here, March 9, coming into New Caledonia, but Vanuatu right next door to it, one to watch. Norfolk Island, Australian Territory just here. They'll be keeping a close eye on it. But this is a big block of high pressure at this stage, protecting New Zealand from it, uh, probably not the best outcome. I think northern New Zealand wouldn't mind getting the remnants of a cyclone to bring in that rain. Speaking of the rain, let's take a look at the next seven days, and then we'll do two weeks. So the first week, we'll cover Australia first of all. Most of Australia drier than average. You can see that cyclone forming up here, though. That's why this area in the blue, leaning wetter than average. And we've also got some tropical life X, um, lows out around Perth. In the New Zealand area, that block of high pressure I was just talking about, that's why you're seeing this area drier than average. So that, that low likely to form drifting towards New Caledonia, but blocked in the New Zealand area due to high pressure through here. But further down, those showers coming in later this week and into the weekend with that southerly does show that much of uh, New Zealand is about average for this time of the year, not wetter or drier. Now here's the next Two weeks worth of rainfall, right up until the middle of March. And what this is showing, that tropical low up there, very clearly obvious, the dark blue in this zone here and the purple, uh, that's around about 100 to 200, maybe 300 millimeters of rain. A lot of rain falling there. But these two blues are at the two different ends of the scale. So the pale blue, five millimeters. Dark blue over here, 200 to 300 millimeters. So that's why you're seeing a whole lot of tropical rain just here and almost nothing a little bit further south. That's where the high is. That's where the high pressure belt is. And it extends down into the North Island. So the North Island's colours are uh, into the pale gold, so 20 millimetres, up to the darker reds, which takes you uh, to around about 60. So there could be some isolated downpours in the North Island on that western side where you might get 50 or 60 millimetres. Most of you will get 20 or 30 millimetres over the next two weeks. In the South Island, you've got that very heavy rain, just like up here in the tropics. 200 millimetres of rain possible for the west coast of the South Island, but over in the eastern areas, greens and yellows show just 10 to 20 millimetres coming. That's drier than average for those areas. So that's the next two weeks worth of rain. Let's take a look at the uh, moisture levels in the soil, clearly very dry around the whole country. The west coast, Closer to normal, but for the most part, we're certainly leaning drier than average soil moisture wise right across the North Island and the East and South Island. Air temperature wise, this is from IBM as well, showing the next uh, month ahead, March's temperatures. Look at this, half a degree above average for the North Island, half a degree to one degree above average for the South Island. So in other words, the same as what we had in December, January, February temperature wise. We've still got a few cold days in there. There's one or two coming this week and this weekend. Might, might even be a bit of snow on the South Island Ranges this weekend, but we've still got plenty more of those warm, windy westerlies and northerlies coming our way. And that is all from me. March coming up, as I say, La Nina is fading away, but we're at the peak of the sea surface temperatures, so it's a little bit one step back, one step forwards as far as tropical lows are concerned. The first half of March looks busy, the second half maybe not quite so active around northern areas. 
That is all from me. We will see you again later this month for our next update. Uh, it'll be issued around about that uh, Easter weekend period. So either the very end of March or the start of April, we'll reassess that as we get towards the end of this month. Have a great month ahead. We'll see you later.